Welcome back to today's show. Joining me on the line from the UK now is Annie Cap. She's the therapist and author of It's Your Choice, Uncover Your Brilliance Using the Iceberg Process. It contains rapid, powerful and effective strategies for health, wealth and happiness. Welcome to the show, Annie. Thank you, Hannah. Hi. Glad to be here. Thanks for joining us. So uh, tell us, first of all, what is the iceberg process? Well, the iceberg process is my little creation of, um, it's a group of, not really strategies, but a way for you to look at your language and observe what has happened to you in your past and what sort of beliefs you might hold. Those might be destructive beliefs, uh, sabotaging beliefs, so they can be positive things as well. But I've found that in people's language, they're actually repeating words that uh, bring them back to their belief system and things that occurred to them in the past. So I've developed a way for them to, for anyone, to to find out what it is that is maybe keeping them stuck in a rut or repeating the same old, I don't want to swear, but the same old terrible things happening. <laughs> so it's, it's a really easy to use uh, means to uncover where your uh, mind is focused on because our subconscious mind actually rules our behavior. Mm. You wrote an interesting article in the Daily Mail sort of explaining it all and talking about the fact how you have a, a few clients who um, just are consistently referring to themselves and describing themselves in a really negative way and, and the damage that that can have on you. Yes, it, it's, um, I have to say it's quite prolific. Uh, I see it all the time and I don't think it's just my clients. I observe it in people's language on the streets or in the tube or you know, just even on the radio like yourself seem to have great language so far, by the way. <laughs> I haven't heard anything, but I can generally now, um, when I listen to people, I get a bit of, um, I'm not clairvoyant, but I know a little bit about their past by what I hear. How is that? Explain what you mean. Well, what, what happens is, is you know, our mind gets kind of stuck on a particular thing that might have occurred to us. It doesn't have to be a really traumatic event. It could be a very small event, you know, with with not that many consequences, but maybe it caused quite um, an embarrassment for someone when they were young. So sometimes it is traumatic, serious things that have happened to somebody, they've been attacked or have, have had something um, very unfortunate happen or a car accident or something that um, their mind it becomes shocked almost and isn't able to process the memories. So what happens is the, the subconscious mind keeps sending the kind of remnants or echoes of this memory back in their back to them through their language so I'll hear people say things like um, I want to I want to kick that the habit of something and they might want to quit smoking but in fact maybe they had been kicked as a child uh, on the playground and and got seriously embarrassed and bullied so it's actually linking backwards to an event um, it, it's really interesting and a lot of it is programmed behavior or learned behavior from things people have told us. It's not always about um, something, you know, traumatic or serious that occurred, but it can be things we just heard through the media, through our parents, through our teachers, you know, people thinking they're rubbish or they're not clever enough or should do better is a common one I hear. So it's, uh, it's really um, fascinating because if we resolve these things that the, um, you know, the icebergs in their mind that is being reflected in their language... I often see people, they look like they physically transform in front of me. Their face changes, they begin to smile, their life starts having great opportunities come into it, and all for just a few, maybe two or three events that happened to them in the past. It's a shame. I mean, I think in general, we're quite a, a negative society. It's looked upon as, um, I, I don't want to say fashionable, but I mean fashionable to sort of be negative about yourself in a way. It's certainly not looked at as being a, a good thing. People come across as arrogant if they start saying, do you know what, I'm really good at my job, or I'm a fantastic cook, or I'm, I'm a, actually a really good wife. People go, oh, really, are you? you know, they don't kind of go, really good for you. Yeah. It's a shame. Yeah, it, it is. I think, you know, I, you can tell by my accent. I'm originally from, from the U.S. I've been living in England now for 12 years, and it is much more prevalent here. Um, I actually had one of my clients kind of explain it to me because I, I found it fascinating that people would say, you know, limiting things like, well, let's not get our hopes up, up or let's not get excited about that because we don't want to be let down, or, gosh, I can't say that because, you know, pride before a fall, and there's, there, you know, you've actually got idioms in, in the English language, the, the British English 
language about these uh, arrogant behaviors. And I had one of my, I'd say, upper middle class clients, which is not my norm, by the way. I have all sorts of clients, all levels of economy and, and situation. But I had one lady explain to me that in her class, she viewed it as improper to be boastful or to actually draw attention to herself. She would always, if they were looking for a, a compliment, they would actually do a roundabout kind of way, and they'd actually say, oh, I'm a, I'm a really crud, you know, cruddy cook, or I'm a rubbish cook. And then they get the person to say, oh, no, you're not. So they, they get it in a backhanded kind of almost an illegal kind of way to mm. summon up a, a bit of praise rather than getting it from themselves and knowing they're a very good cook and they make an awesome souffle. It's weird. I mean, c can you see that changing realistically in the whole of society? Well, I'm kind of hoping one by one because every person, and I'm not bragging about myself, I'm just talking about this techniques that I use. And no, please do. People. Brag. You have to. This is oh, the okay, point. I'll brag about myself. Tell us how great your book well, is. <laughs> well, my, my book is actually fantastic, and I'm really pleased because I've gotten some really wonderful feedback from the advanced readers, and I've had some people that I actually think are quite um, critical who say, oh my God, I can't believe you can write like this, <laughs> because I, oh, I you know, it's my first attempt at a book. But I have to say that the people that I help, they go on then to share the knowledge with somebody else, and they then try and get their family and friends not to put themselves down. So it's almost like I've got, I'm starting my mini revolution over here, and trying to make people be, you know, not Americans, but not so dismissive of their talents, because it's, it's just unbelievable, the devaluation that happens. And I feel it's, I'm quite saddened by the younger generation who has been raised in that environment and then can't find jobs and you know it's just how do they get optimism when even their teachers and people who are trying to instruct them in higher education or trades don't actually think they're going to be successful i mean it's it's, just, we need better mentors you know we need leaders out there to say you know you can do whatever you want yeah, oh, absolutely. But I mean, the interesting, I just suddenly thought of the, that there's actually another side to this. When you th Do you ever watch any of the um, sort of the singing competitions? That, I do. Yeah, the likes I think of that's a, a good thing. A, American Idol or the X Factor or things like that. Um, or the, Glee Club. Yeah, I haven't actually seen Glee Club. Or Glee, I think it's called Glee. Glee, yeah. Yeah, that, that's um, good. But, uh, but I mean, the, the idea of when you get these, um, not just kids, I mean, adults as well, but, but often when you get these young kids on who come along and think they're great singers because their parents have told them that they're great singers, so they believe that they're great singers, and, and they're absolutely terrible. <laughs> but they stand there saying, yep, yeah, I can sing, I can sing, and when Simon Cowell says, no, you really can't, well, I can, actually, because I know I can. And then you kind of think, God, that's scary. So there is the sort of other side of thing where you do have that overconfidence and people say that they're great when they're actually not. Yeah, well, I, I don't know if they're, they're um, I don't want to say they might have a little bit of a mental issue, but I have seen people, <laughs> I, I have actually seen people who have this, there's a, in psychology, there's a, there's a term about um, self-monitoring, and um, some people have a very little amount of self-monitoring and think they're just, they, they just are fantastic when actually they're not, but... But I, I don't know. I think, you know, we're talking about television. They do that on purpose. They pick mm. the, you know, they're picking the, they're trying to make fun of them to make good television, aren't they? True, so yeah. They're picking somebody who's really quite funny looking or has a, a strange way about him to sing, you know, some old Peter Frampton, Frampton song or, you know, Andy Gibbs song and, and just laughing at him. So I think, I, I don't know, some, some people may not be that great to, to us, but I think, you know, good on them to have the attitude and the courage to get up and do that mm. and hopefully it doesn't you know taint them so that they um stop trying but people have to be happy with what they've been given i mean you know i had i had a when the, the article came out there was some comments on the daily mail's o online website and one of the guys said what you're saying he says but what if you are fat and ugly and terrible and rubbish and stupid and i thought well at least that person loves themselves and they'll find somebody who's similar person to be maybe a partner with or to be a friend with, that they can go off and have a great time train spotting, you know? Good <laughs> for them. Yeah. And, and 
another thing that you talk about in the article, people who, uh, or you're asking the question, do you describe yourself as being always late or hopeless at reading maps? Yeah. Um, I know people who, are, who describe themselves as both of those things, in fact, not necessarily the same person. But um, I, I think, I guess the idea and the point is instead of saying, oh, I'm hopeless at reading maps, to maybe learn a little bit about reading maps and feel a bit more confident about reading maps so you can say, I used to be hopeless at reading maps, but I'm actually quite good now. Yeah, yeah, or also I don't have a lot of experience at reading maps is a better way to frame it mm. because oftentimes, um, you know, I was thinking right before your call, gosh, I haven't I haven't done very many radio shows and I thought, ooh, I don't know how I'll be. And then I went, oh, no, it'll be okay. She'll help me. So I, I tried to just, you know, use my own techniques on myself just to say, you know, this is your business and you're going to guide me through it and I'm going to be fine. So it's the well, same you were more with than fine. Oh, thank you, thank you. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I think, I think it is a matter of um, expectation, too, and if people can realize, gosh, you know, I haven't, I haven't done a lot of map reading or I haven't played snooker very often. I know I pronounced that wrong, but my husband always laughs at me with snooker instead of snooker. <laughs> but, um, you know, if you realize that you're at the place you are for the practice that you've had, then that's okay. And this just kind of brings me back to this, the, the words that people hear. It's not about saying a word once or twice like the man who said kick. I'm talking about dominant, dominant phrases or dominant words that come across repetitively. So you'll actually see your own problems if you actually have just take the time to listen to yourself. It's just, it's, it's really quite helpful. Mm. So we've been practicing this bad-mouthing for a long time. Our, our personal put-downs might have gone back, you know, I'm 49, so it might have come back since I was, you know, three years old, whatever. I started thinking of myself or my parents might have said or my teacher or, you know, nanny said. I didn't have a nanny, but you know what I mean? Somebody in my environment might have said something to me and I might have taken that on board. So it's it's stuff we've been doing for a long time. So we're really, really good at breaking down, you know, putting ourselves down and putting, putting stops and blocks in front of our, our opportunities. Well, I think it would be really great to encourage everybody who's listening to this interview to say to uh, one thing to the person that they're either with at the moment or, or the next person that they, they meet. I'm talking about today. I don't mean in life. Um, and say something positive about themselves. Say something that they're, that they're good at. Um, so we'll kick them off. We'll, we'll start. Can we say one each before we say goodbye? Oh, yes, of you, course. You, you start then, Sarah. What am I good at? Um, actually, I'm good at a lot of things. <laughs> I could say that. I make a really, really good chocolate cake, mm. and I um, I know how to windsurf. Oh, fantastic. Good, good. Okay, well, I'm good at finding really interesting guests like you. <laughs> Fabulous. <laughs> Thanks so much for joining us, Annie. Really looking forward to, to getting into your book. It's called It's Your Choice. Uncover your brilliance using the iceberg process. Listeners can get a copy via our website. It should be going up there this afternoon, I think. And if people want to find out more information about you and the book, they can have a look on your website. It's www.anniecap.co.uk. Thanks for joining us, Annie. Thank you, Anna. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> Talk Radio Europe. Hello, this is Gloria Honeyford, and I want to remind you.